the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Jagannath, or Lord Krishna, Lord Balaram, and His Divine Energy, Srimati Radharani. We're all the servants of Lord Krishna. He is the Master and we are all the servants. And we take pleasure in making these arrangements for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. Just like when we were children, we would enjoy to go on the playground and swing, go on the swing and swing back and forth. And especially at this time in India, it's very hot, very hot, hot, very humid. And to be on a swing, then you enjoy the cool breeze. You can enjoy the cool air from swinging back and forth. So this is the arrangement, the Julan Yatra is being done for, to give pleasure to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna likes to enjoy. As a young child, he would enjoy eating butter. And he became known as Makan Chor, the butter thief. He would steal the butter and sometimes he would eat it, sometimes he would give it to his friends, and sometimes he'd give it to the monkeys. Lord Krishna is very fond of the monkeys. One reason why Krishna is so fond of the monkeys is because when he came before, when he came as Lord Rama, at that time the monkeys had helped him in his battle against Ravan in the battle of Lanka. So Lord Krishna is feeling indebted to the monkeys and he likes to share the butter with them. Lord Krishna also enjoyed being a cowherd boy. Although he was born in Mathura as the son of Vasudev and Devaki, he went to Vrindavan and he lived in the home of Nanda and Yashoda. And Nanda Maharaj was a Vaishya and he had many, many cows. It said he had nine lakh cows. <coughs> so Lord Krishna enjoyed taking care of the cows. Every day he would go into the forest with the cow boys and they would take care of the calves and they would enjoy being in the forest of Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, there are 12 forests which surround the river Yamuna. The river Yamuna is a very holy river. It is said the water of the Yamuna is even more powerful than the water of the Ganges. It's very sacred water and Lord Krishna would enjoy being there with the cowherd boys, the cows would drink the water of the Yamuna and the cowherd boys would sometimes splash each other and sometimes they would also take bath in the Yamuna. Lord Krishna would enjoy being in Vrindavan where there is the Govardhan Hill. Govardhan Hill is a very special hill. It's not any ordinary hill, but it is a very sacred form of Lord Krishna. That Lord Krishna comes in many different forms. And one of the forms which he comes is as Govardhan Hill. Govardhan Hill. It is said the, Govard, the hill of Govardhan is the best of all the devotees. Although it's Lord Krishna, it's also a devotee of Krishna. And it's the best of all the devotees. <coughs> there are many wonderful devotees. Maharaj Yudhisthira was a great devotee. Prahlad 
was also a very great devotee. Drew was also a great devotee. But the very best of all the devotees was the Govardhan Hill. And Lord Krishna enjoyed bringing the cows there. The cows would wander on the Govardhan Hill and they would eat the grass and there would be also trees which produced different fruits which the cows sometimes would also eat. They would also drink the water which flowed from the top of the Govardhan Hill. So Lord Krishna would enjoy being in Vrindavan. Vrindavan, the forest of Tosis are there. And many different holy places are all there in Vrindavan. Lord Krishna, of course, performed pastimes in other places. For example, he, he, once he grew up a little bit, he moved to Mathura, which was his birthplace. He appeared in Mathura, but immediately after his birth, he had gone to Vrindavan. And he stayed in Vrindavan for his childhood, up until he was 12 years old. Then when he was 12 years old, he moved to Mathura. And he lived in Mathura for some time, and then he moved to Dwarka. So these three places were the places of the Lord's pastimes. Dwarka is not in New Delhi. I know there's a Dwarka in Delhi, but it's not that Dwarka, but it's Dwarka which is over in Gujarat, away over on the, on the West Coast, West Coast of India and in the edge of South Saurashtra. So Dwarka, very far away from Delhi. But Lord Krishna moved everyone there to Dwarka. So Lord Krishna lived in Dwarka with all of his family. All of them, because as he, once he grew up, he accepted wives. And Lord Krishna had many wives. Right? Do you know how many wives Krishna had? 16,108. Oh, could you imagine? 16,108 wives. He must have worked very hard, huh? <laughs> Take care of 16,108 wives. Do you know how many children he had? By each wife? Ten sons, one daughter. Yes, very good. Ten sons and one by each wife. Each and every wife. And he had a palace for each and every wife also. Each and every wife had their own palace. And Lord Krishna lived with each and every wife also. And when they got married, they all got married at the same time and they had 16,100 vivava, vivaha yagna. And Lord Krishna was sitting in each of the yagyas and also his mother and father were also there for the yagna. So he married each of the queens according to the religious principles and he provided a palace for each and every queen. And by each and every queen, he, they had their family, they had their children. Narada Muni came to visit Krishna in Dwarka one time. And he went to see Krishna in different places. He went round the different palaces. And he was amazed to see how Lord Krishna was doing different activities in each and every place. Lord Krishna could expand himself to be in each and every palace with each and every one of his wives. So he kept them all very happy. He was a very good husband. None of them divorced him. None of them left Krishna. They all were very happy to have Krishna as their husband. 
and Lord Krishna lived there in Dwarka for many years. This is the pastimes of Krishna. So it is that Krishna in Dwarka is perfect. <coughs> Krishna is more perfect, however, in Mathura. And Krishna is most perfect in Praja, in Vrindavan. In Dwarka, that is more the pastimes of Lakshmi and Narai. The Lord is very opulent in Dwarka. If you go to the USA, we have one temple there. It is called Temple in USA, in Los Angeles. And it is known as New Dwarka. <laughs> it's quite an opulent temple. So in Srila Prabhupada's time, that was in the 1970s, Srila Prabhupada gave it the name New Dwarka. And the deities there are not Radha and Krishna, but they're known as Rukmini and Dwarka Dish. So Lord Krishna, when he came to Dwarka, he was known as Dwarka Dish. And among his 16,000, 108 wives, the principal wife was Rukmini. Hmm? And then Lord Krishna enjoyed there with all of his family members. At one point, he brought his whole family to Kurukshetra. Now, you've heard of Kurukshetra probably because, well, what happened at Kurukshetra? Yes, the battle of Kurukshetra. We think of Kurukshetra. This is the place where Lord Krishna spoke the part of a Gita. But Lord Krishna came to Kurukshetra before the battle of Kurukshetra. It happened one time there was a solar eclipse. Now when there's an eclipse, it's a very inauspicious time. So it's customary that the devotees, they'll go to a holy place and they will perform some sacrifices. They'll do some yajna. So Lord Krishna came from Dwarka, all the way from Dwarka, and he brought his family with him. They all came to Kurukshetra, all the way from Dwarka, to observe this eclipse. And at that time, Lord Krishna told the gopis in Vrindavan, come to Kurukshetra and meet me. Because he knew the gopis were missing him. He had been with them as a young boy, but he'd grown up and gone to Mathura. And he promised the gopis that he would come back. So he was not able to go back for a long time. And he'd gone to Dwarka and he got married. But he came to Kurukshetra again and he requested all the friends from Vrindavan, come and meet me at Kurukshetra. So they all came. All the gopis came to meet Krishna at Kurukshetra. Now in Vrindavan, among all the gopis, the most Dear to all, of all the gopis to Krishna, who, who do you think? Yes, Radharani, Srimati Radharani. So they all came and they met Krishna. And it was the first time meeting Krishna in a long time. You know, may, maybe like you, you come here to this place and then after a long time you go back to India. And your friends come and meet you and they say, Oh, you're so different. Oh, you're not the same anymore. So Lord Krishna had that experience that he met with all the gopis. But they said to Krishna that, Oh, where is your flute? And where, uh, where is your peacock feather? And they thought, you're not the same anymore. We like you as a cowherd boy. But now you're a prince. 
And we don't like this new dress which you're wearing. We like you when you were in Vrindavan with the flute and the peacock feather in your hair. And in Vrindavan, there's the Govardhan Hill and the Yamuna River. So the gopis thought, we want to take you to Vrindavan. We don't like this place, Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra, there are so many elephants and chariots, so many soldiers, military people. It's not like Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, we have the Govardhan Hill and the peacocks. It's much nicer. We want to take you back to Vrindavan. So Kurukshetra is famous for two things. One was the speaking of the Bhagavad Gita, which Lord Krishna did before the battle of Kurukshetra. And the other thing was Rati the first Rati Atra took place at Kurukshetra. So you know, we know, Kur, we know Jagannath Puri is famous for Rati Atra. But actually the first Rati Atra took place at Kurukshetra. The gopis put Krishna on the rat and he pulled him to Vrindavan. They were happy to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. Lord Krishna enjoys all of these dealings with his devotee. Lord Krishna is not so much pleased by Gyan, you know, knowledge. And he's not so much pleased by karma, just by your work. But Lord Krishna is pleased by devotion, bhakti. It is devotion which Lord Krishna wants. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Palam Toryam Yome Bhaktya Prayachati. Lord Krishna is saying, if you offer me a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or a little water with love and devotion, then I will accept it. Now, when Lord Krishna says like that, someone may think, oh, he's very greedy. He wants all our flowers and all our fruits. We have to give them to him. But actually, Krishna's not so greedy to get our flowers and our fruits. Because he has many goddesses of fortune, many Lakshmis who are all serving him. In Vaikuntha, there are many Vaik there are many Lakshmis there who are all serving him, and they are all bringing beautiful flowers and the best of fruit, and they are all offering to. So Krish Lord Krishna is not so eager to get what we offer to him, but what he wants from us is our devotion. Yes, our love and devotion. So we're trying to please Krishna by our devotion. And the best way to show our devotion to Krishna is by chanting his holy name, by doing the kirtan, chanting the names of the Lord. There are many names of the Lord, many different names. Some people like to chant the names of Lord Vishnu, there is one prayer called Vishnu Sahasrana, the 1,000 names of Vishnu. But the 1,000 names of Lord Vishnu is equal to one time chanting the holy name of Lord Rama. Yes, Lord Rama. It is described by Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva told his good wife. Lord Shiva's wife is? Parvati. Parvati, right. So Parvati was going to chant the 1,000 names of Vishnu. But Lord Shiva told her, 
You don't have to chant the 1,000 names of Vishnu. Just chant the name of Lord Ram. Rame Rame Namo Rame Sahasra Nama Bistuyam Shri Rama Nama Varanini. So Parvati chanted the holy name of Lord Rama. And she got the same benefit of chanting 1,000 names of Vishnu. And then we also learn that three names of Lord Rama is equal to one, chant, one time chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna's name is very special, very powerful. It is Chintamani. Chintamani means it can fulfill all of our desires. Do you have any desires? Yes, yes. Some desire, yeah. Mm, yeah. So, if you chant the holy name, you chant Lord Krishna's name, it can fulfill all of your desires. So, we have come here today to encourage all of you to chant the holy names of the Lord. It is said, the Kali Yuga, you know this age is called Kali Yuga, it is said this age is an ocean of faults, full of many faults. You know, we're not very pious in this age. We're lazy, we're unlucky, we're often cheated, misguided. But there's one good thing about the Kali Yuga, and that is that simply by chanting the holy name, you can get all of the success, everything you want. So although the age of Kali is full of faults, just by doing this kirtan, then you can cross over the ocean of material misery and you can experience our spiritual nature, the nature of the soul. The nature of the soul is sat chit anand, eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. Our body is temporary, it is full of ignorance and miserable. But the soul is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. We can awaken that spiritual nature every time we chant the holy name. So we have come today to request all of you, please, you try to chant more this Maha Mantra and make your life successful. Okay? Thank you very much. Uh, you have some questions? Maybe? Yes. Have any question. Okay. Is it bad to have desires? Is it bad to have desires? We cannot stop desires because we have a mind, right? And the mind desires, but there's quality in desires. Hmm? There's good desires and there are bad desires, right? So we have to know what to desire. We have to know what is a good desire and what is not a good desire. Hmm? But you cannot stop desire. But we can change the quality of our desire. A bad desire, you know, I want some cigarettes. I want to drink beer, <laughs> these kind of desires, you know. Mm. But good desire, I want to go to temple. <laughs> I want to chant Hare Krishna Mantra. I want to read the Bhagavad Gita. I want to go back to Godhead. Oh, <laughs> this girl has a very special desire. She wants to go back to Godhead. May Krishna bless you and fulfill your desire. Pray to God. Hmm? Pray, to God. pray to God, yes. What are you going to pray for? Mm -hmm. For desires? <laughs> Have you got desires? Yes. What are your desires? Don't be shy. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, any other question then? Yes, Just want to ask about this Kurukshetra, the Gopis came to Kurukshetra, that is which time they came, like during the war, after the war, or it was different. Just to bring Yeah, the Gopis came to be Krishna, no? Yeah, Gopis came from Vrindavan, and Krishna came from Dwarka with all his family and all of his wives. And the Gopis, this was before the Kurukshetra war. Before the battle, all of that, before all that took place. It's it, the only place outside of Vrindavan where Radharani had the opportunity to be with Lord Krishna. It's the only other place except for Vrindavan. So it was before the battle. So Kurukshetra, you know, you can go there. It's a place on the map. There's even a railway station there. And you can go there, Kurukshetra. We have a temple there also. There are many other temples there. It's a place of pilgrimage. We know from the Bhagavad Gita. It's a Dharma Kshetri Kurukshetri. Yes, good. You see these, these devotees, these young ladies here, they're learning the slokas. They've learned the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita in, in Sanskrit. They're reciting it. It's very important that we should learn the Bhagavad Gita. Read the Bhagavad Gita and it helps us to get peace of mind and to cultivate yes. spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is within all of us, but it has to be awakened by hearing. Just like sometimes, you know, we sleep. We sleep at night. How do you wake up? Somebody calls you, your mother will call you, wake up, wake up. You have to go to school, you know. So somebody, you hear some sound that wakes you up. So the same way, we are asleep. Our spiritual nature is asleep. It's covered. And we have to, be, we have to hear, we have to be called. The spiritual knowledge awakens us, brings us to come to our state of real consciousness. So we say Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gora Chandaboli. Lord Chaitanya is calling. Wake up, sleeping soul. All right? We are sleeping in the lap of Maya. Maya means the illusion. What is the illusion? We are thinking, I am the body. But the body is only the dress. It's just the dress of the person. The real person is the soul. Hmm? Atma. Yes, the Atma. So the body is the dress. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, just like you change the dress, you change also the body. Right? Do you know the best? Vachamsi jarnani yata vihaya nabhani krenati naroparani tata sharirani vihaya jarnani anyani samyati nabhani dehi. Yeah, just like we change the dress, we change also the body. From the child to the young man to the old man, we give up the body, we take a new body. So we change the body. Now you have the young lady's body. 
Now, but where were you 30 years ago? I was in another body. Yes, you were in another body, right? We don't remember what body we were in. We were in another body, a different body. Body is changed, but the soul is the same. Krishna remembers all of his different bodies. We don't remember. We forget. Now you have the lady's body. Maybe last life you were in a man's body. Huh? We don't know what body you were in. Sometimes people would ask Srila Prabhupada, how old are you, Swamiji? And he would say, I am the same age as you. He would say, I am the same age as you. And they would be, huh? They would be surprised. They say, yes, I am a soul. And our souls are all the same age. If you go to Vaikun, if you go to the spiritual work, there are no old people. Everyone is the same age. This, this world, this is Mrityu Loka, place of death. But the spiritual world, there is eternal life. So everyone is the same age. Nobody grows old. They have a spiritual body. We also have a spiritual body, but our spiritual body is covered by the material body. We have to purify the body. And we, we purify the body by chanting Hare Krishna, by worshipping Krishna, and by reading the books about Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj, for the wonderful class and elaborating. What's your name? Amisha. Amisha. So, Amisha has also been blessed, especially. <laughs> your friend, right? Your friend? Classmate? No, a classmate. We are Kirtan Mela friends. Kirtan Mela friends. You have done a wonderful job of getting everybody together for the pleasure of the Lordships and uh, taking blessing of Maharaj. We will pray for Maharaj's health first. Yes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we can have a cake cutting for Arya? A big Hari bowl for all her class friends. Many ah. of her class friends have come. So okay. if yeah, all, all, of the, all of them will come and yes. just circle around the yeah, children who will come. come the, yeah. You can stand at the back. All Nandini's classrooms. Be careful the cake will step it And uh, the parents can come here, the yes, friends, yes. the grandparents also. Then Maharaj yes. has to leave also at the same time. <laughs> uh, you have to sing Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You have to turn around. Come this side where Aryan is standing. Just turn around the gate.